All right. So uh, I'll let the candidates each uh, come up in order. We're, we are uh, we are voting for two positions, and we have all three candidates running uh, on the ballot uh, here. So first, Dennis Curtis. You have to project. I apologize for not okay. having a mic. Uh, That's today. okay. That's okay. I, I really don't need a mic. I guess this is just for the the webcast or the whatever. Webcast and, and, okay. And, 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 for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Dennis Curtis. <clears throat> if you are confused, my name's on the plaque out here. I helped build this school. <clears throat> I've lived in the Wiseburn community for over 40 years. And all three of my children have attended uh, the Wiseburn schools. And I've known many of the teachers, administrators, and staff personally over the many years. <clears throat> Uh, I've served on the board for a total of 22 years. I've seen the Wiseburn Elementary School District evolve, change, prosper into a, a full unified school district, complete with a high school. I worked on the unification process with other board members for over 12 years to finally free us, the Wiseburn community, uh, from under Sentinella Valley. For those of you who are familiar with Sentinella Valley, it was it was a difficult time. Our kids would go to Dana, and after Dana, to graduate from the eighth grade, they went to the wind. Nobody wanted to go to Hawthorne High School. I know some of you may think it's wonderful, and that's good. That's, that's your choice. We, here in Wiseburn, wanted to give the community a better choice. <clears throat> I worked on four general obligation bonds, um, to get passed so that we could completely rebuild, and I use the word complete, I'm talking about this building, Cabrillo, Dana, or whatever names you, you call them now. Uh, all of the schools are all brand new, and I say brand new, some of them I think are maybe 10 years old. <clears throat> I worked on some of the, I worked with the loan, along with some of the most dedicated school board members in the community, uh, Nelson, and uh, Roger uh, worked with them real closely, uh, started back in 1993. Uh, several years uh, serving as the board president three times during my tenure. And with the group effort, one person alone can't do anything. It takes a group, it takes a conglomerate of good board members to accomplish many things. And uh, just look around, this, this building is just one of them what makes Wiseburn a very prosperous and a very good school district. But the magic is in the classrooms, not, not an empty building. So hiring the best teachers, maintaining them, retaining them, and, and having uh, uh, all the right certifications, that's the important thing. Uh, I had visions in the past, and with the help of, the, of this community and many of the other board members, we have accomplished many of those um, tasks. But in any worthwhile endeavor, it's never uh, an ending story. It always needs to be, there's always more that needs to be done. Typical example is new technology, and now we're getting into solar panels, which is a good idea. There's, you know, I fully embrace new technologies. When I was first on the board, we didn't have any, we had a small computer lab. Now we have a full-blown computer uh, laboratory and, and all the good stuff that the kids nowadays, the tools that kids nowadays need to be worthwhile and to be complete uh, students. I feel I have the vast experience and many years to offer even more. I, don't, uh, I didn't come to here this evening to give you a history lesson, but I guess I did that in a kind of a roundabout way. But uh, in closing, I'd like to ask, ask you to return me to the Wiseburn School Board again. In November, there'll be an election, <clears throat> and you'll have a choice. And it won't be an appointment by four board members as to who the next board member will be. The people get to vote for them. So uh, I hope that I can count on your support and votes, vote, or votes, it depends on if, if you have any sway with your uh, significant other. <laughs> mine usually cancels mine out. <laughs> So I want to thank you for the time this evening. And Eddie, I thank you for having us here tonight as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up, Dr. Neil Goldman. Hold that. All right. 
Thank you, Eddie. Thank you to the board. Thank you, Weisman Watch. Nice to be here. My name is Neil Goldman, and it has been my privilege to serve on the school board for the last 10 years. One of the things, uh, one of my important, my most important roles, as probably for many of you, is to be a parent. I'm a dad, right? And I wanted my kids to have a great education. It's one of the reasons I moved to the Weisburn area. I want that for all of our kids, and I'm really proud of what we've accomplished over the last 10 years. Here's some stats, and you can find the sourcing of this on our website, on the uh, Weisburn Unified School District website. We're in the top 7% of districts nationally. The top 1% best teachers in California. We have California, dis excuse me, distinguished schools, and we have among the safest schools in the state. That's vitally important. And one of my roles, again, as a dad, another one of my important roles is as a strategic consultant working with hundreds of organizations nationally. That's informed my role on the board and helped me facilitate our strategic planning efforts involving our community, involving our teachers, involving everyone a few years ago that led to what we now call our five pillars. You've heard this before. If you try to be everything to everyone, you'll end up being nothing to anybody, right? You've heard that. So what are we going to be at the district? What do we stand for? We identified five things. First, safety. That's our number one pillar. If our kids aren't safe, both emotionally and physically, nothing happens. So you're seeing additional safety measures happening at the school. Number two is um, student-centered. The learning has, fun has funneled from where the teacher used to be the, the, the source of all knowledge to really has to be the student now, right? They have to be the ones taking the initiative. We're giving them the energy and the fuel and the passion to learn because life is continuing to adapt. We need to prepare them for the future. The third one is whole child. So it's not just academics, but really making them feel engaged, competent, confident. The fourth one is community involvement. So I'm thrilled to be here and get our community involvement repeatedly. And then the fifth one is organizational strength. Let me talk on that one for a minute. One of the most important roles we have as school board members is to both work with our district and the cabinet and the superintendent, and also to push back, to challenge, to make sure they are doing what we need to do best for our kids, right? So one of the things I'm particularly proud of is being a financial steward of our of our, of our resources. And I'm pushing our district superintendent and our CBO to find additional resources, additional funds for money. I'm pushing them to make sure that we have matching funds and are in line for matching funds from the state. What matching funds means is, for, for example, on some of our construction, if we put $100,000 in, we may get $50,000, $60,000 back because we're in line for matching funds from the state of California. Currently, there's no money, but we're first in line when the next time money comes, and we will get some of that money back. It involves something that's called piggybacking. When we make contracts with others and other districts want to do that, they use our contract, we get a piece of that. It's grants always being a fiscal steward of our money, and I think that's particularly important to us as residents here. By the way, as you may know, all of us are residents in the community. You have to be to be on the school board. I've been here, I've now been a resident for, since 1990 I moved in. So what about the future? So I'm proud of where we've gone, but there's still much more to do. One thing I'm really passionate about is if you look at futurists, right, what's happening in the future? The world's changing, right? It continues to change. One of the things futurists will tell you that's happening in the future is hyper-personalization. Things are getting more personalized, more individualized. We have to do that for our students. Special needs kids appropriately have uh, individual education plans, IEPs. I want to have, call them IEPs, call them personal education plans for every student, and we're working toward that. So we can personalize and individualize education for every kid that they, we can meet their needs and we have some things that are happening in that direction. So I'm proud of where we're going, I'm proud of what we've done, but there's still more work to do. In my professional world, I bring a strategic perspective. I also have a doctorate in education because I'm passionate about education and I believe the greatest gift we can give any kid and any family and, and, and our society overall is students with a great education so they're ready for life after school. So I too am asking for your vote to continue this path, to move us forward, and to know that with stewardship we've done a great job and there's more to do, and I ask for your vote as well. Thank you so much. And last and certainly not least, uh, Michelle Legaspi. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Renda. Thank you, uh, Wiseburn Watch. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. I realize I am the new kid on the block. Um, and so um, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time uh, letting you get to know me. I've been here for uh, since 2006, 2005, I think. Uh, we moved here when uh, my husband and I weren't quite married yet. Uh, we decided to like start looking for a house uh, that we knew that we wanted to raise our family in. And I found this little pocket, and I'm like, where am I? Um, and I realized, actually, that um, I was uh, living in Westchester at the time and commuting uh, into Manhattan Beach. Um, and I would pass a school site that was under construction. And I was like, wow, like that is an amazing, that I'm, I feel so, um, I feel so like envious of those kids that get to work, uh, to, to, to learn in that building, the teachers that get to work in that building. And I, I would watch its progress um, as I passed by. Little did I know that just a few years after that, um, I would actually be moving in actually across the street. Uh, back then it was ANSA and now it's Del Air. But I actually ended up perching as a house uh, right across the street from that school. And I didn't realize it actually until I had moved in and I'm like, I think this is my school. Um, and the reason why it piqued my interest so much is because I am an educator. Um, I've been an educator for 23 years, and um, I uh, have taught all the grade levels uh, in elementary. And I've been a teacher leader in Manhattan Beach for that amount of time, um, doing such things as being able to lead uh, curriculum adoptions, being able to be a teacher uh, leader, uh, a teacher trainer in writing and in math. Um, and so, Needless to say, I'm very familiar with the ins and outs of school. Um, I work very closely with the district office team in order to be able to uh, push forward some of the initiatives that got Manhattan Beach to. Um, I, I try not to say that that's where they, where they are today, but I've been there for so long. <laughs> and so I think I had a good hand, uh, a part in that. Um, and actually, and when one of the old uh, superintendents asked me where my kids go to school, because then we got married and had some couple kids, I said, well, we're, we're in Wiseburg. And he's like, well, why aren't they in Manhattan Beach? And I said, well, because I believe in this district. I know the kind of education that, um, that this district provides. And I want that, that, that neighborhood feeling. I want my kids to go to a neighborhood school and that is reflective of our values and reflective of what we want for our children. So that is why. And he, he was OK with the answer. And he actually said, well, all right, I like Tom Johnson, so OK. And so um, I was allowed to keep my children here. Um, but uh, he, uh, so that being said, said, um, you know, there came a point in my time and I came up through um, all the PTAs. I did all the things that an uh, involved parent would want to do. Um, I joined PTAs. I actually not just joined PTAs, but then I became um, part of the board of the PTAs, running a lot of successful events and fundraising for uh, my kids' elementary school. Uh, eventually, I wanted to move on from that and have a greater impact because, again, I did, it wasn't just about my kids' school. It was about this entire community. Uh, so I joined WEF and uh, became the community liaison for WEF and uh, looked for all the partners in the community that, again, makes this um, um, area so amazing. Um, and did a little bit of time with them. And um, then this opportunity came up for me to be able to um, apply for a, 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 to finish out a position. And um, I kind of thought about it going, God, you know, this is, this is the best opportunity for me to be able to really give back to the full capacity. I'm always looking for ways to be able to give back to the fullest extent and, and think about where my greatest good would be. Um, and I knew, for, I knew very, very um, early on that my greatest good really is to reach as many uh, kids and as parents and families as I could. So um, I said, well, <laughs> why not? Um, and here I am. So it's been an amazing year to be able to learn and to grow uh, with the current board. And again, my role as an educator really has informed a lot of the discussions and the decision making that we've done. Um, I really take it very seriously that I am, at, I'm in, and I'm still currently in the classroom as a fifth grade teacher, so I, I do that full time as well. Um, and I take it very seriously that 
my voice as an educator can be heard uh, in that boardroom because I do feel it's very important that not not to say that we're you know going to you know it has to be one way but I provide a perspective that I believe is very valuable because again I've been there I, I've felt that I felt what our teachers are feeling and I've also felt it as a parent as well so and I didn't mention that, my lovely children. Um, they are, they've gone through the entire system. My daughter is now at Da Vinci Science as a sophomore, and my son is at Wiseburn Middle as an eighth grader. So I'm still pretty much in it, um, feeling all the things at, with, that teenagers can make you feel. Um, and so I am just so proud to be able to be here in front of you today. Um, and again, as the new kid on the block, um, I felt that it was important that I talk about who I am and where I'm coming from, um, and to be able to continue the work uh, to, to provide the community with um, what I feel is the most important in making a strong community is a strong school district. And I know that we have that. We have all the building blocks uh, that we need in order to keep building its future and making it the place that we all want to send our kids to and hopefully grandkids in someday. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thank you so much.